Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for coming. I'm here to tell you about a, 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 um, an API I've been working on, um, and it's just landed in Linus's tree. And so I thought this would be a great time to, uh, to, to explain to you why you want to start using my API and uh, why, uh, why, 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 why things will improve if you do. Um, so the X-Array is an automatically resizing array of pointers. Um, it's indexed by an, by an unsigned long. Um, I know this doesn't suit everybody. There are file system people in particular who would like me to index it by a U64 so that they can store blocks in it. Um, that's an extension that might happen in the future. It's, it's, it's not there today. Um, so the, when, when you initialize an X-Array, um, every pointer in it is null. Um, <clears throat> there, 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 there are um, APIs where people say, oh, well, if you've never stored to it, then you shouldn't load from it. That, that should return you E in val or something like that. No, if you've never stored to it, it's null. It's just, it's an infinitely large array full of null pointers. Um, it has a spin lock, so it handles its own synchronization. Um, and it's RCU safe. So if, if, you, um, if you do a load from it, you can do that load without holding it, it, it won't take the lock in order to do a load. Uh, you can choose to use the spin lock, which is inside the X-ray, in order to make sure that uh, somebody else who's deleting it isn't going to step on your toes, but that's, that's not a necessary part of the API for you. So how do you use it? Well, fundamentally, you can just do loads and stores, because it, it's, it's an array. Um, there's no difference between um, storing a null pointer and using the erase call. Um, that is, 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 this is the, uh, for, for a normal kind of array, it's, it's just a convenience function. Um, you could pass uh, null as a third argument to XA store and, and zero as the GFPT, or you know, make up your own GFP flags, whatever you like. Uh, it won't use them. Um, Erasing a null, store, storing a null in the X-ray does not um, require allocation. So rather than, just, just to make it easier for people, I have XA arrays because for a lot of people, that's what they actually want to, to do. And since this is an infinitely large array, um, it's somewhat inefficient to count from zero to U long max just to look for all of the um, elements in the array. So we have XA for each which will um, which, which will find everything between index and max, and it will update index each time around the loop um, until, it, until it gets to max, at which time it will stop looking. It will also, of course, stop looking if we run off the, if, if, we, if there were only nulls past, um, past index. So it's, it's not that you need to keep track of where, you know, where, where your max is, the highest number you've ever used. You can just say U long max there and uh, it, it will know to stop doing any work once, uh, once, once there are no more entries left in the array. Um, you can see that final, um, the final argument type is a filter, and you're saying probably, uh, so what is an XA mark T anyway? Um, you get three auxiliary bits per non-null entry. So you can't, you can't set these bits on a null entry. It will, it will respectfully decline to do that. Um, yeah, you can set and clear marks, and you can, you can get the value of a mark. Um, so <clears throat> the, the page cache uses this, it marks pages as being dirty, and then you can iterate over every dirty page. Um, there are other users who, who do other things with it. Um, choose your own adventure, there's some really, really fun adventures, fun things you can do with marks. Um, back in the radix tree days, this, this replaces the radix tree, by the way. I, I forgot to mention that earlier. This replaces the radix tree, and so if you're looking at radix tree converted code, it might well use the name tag. Um, that name conflicts with the traditional meaning of a tagged pointer, which is a pointer that has some of its lower bits usurped in order to uh, indicate some amount of meaning. Um, and we had people who want to store tagged pointers in the X-Array, and they were getting quite confused between the different kinds of tags. And I tried to document my way out of it. I decided, you know what, it's easier just to change the name. Um, and I came up with mark instead of tag. Either way, it's, it's three auxiliary bits, and you can do useful things with them. 
there are some less used um, parts of the normal API. Um, you can do an insert instead of a store. And the, the difference in semantics is that you will get back um, an error. I think it's e exist if um, xa insert. If, if there is something that is non null there, you will get back an e exist. Um, somewhat more usefully, but a little bit more tricky to use, is xa compare and exchange. And xa insert is actually implemented as a wrapper around compare and exchange. It's compare and exchanging with null. But some people really want to use the insert. API, and you, you know, you, you, you look at the code, and it's like, yeah, this totally makes sense to use the, the insert wrapper instead of uh, a big uh, compare exchange. The big advantage of compare exchange is that you do get back the current value so that you can do different things depending on what you get back. Um, some, some, some places like to um, look, look in the tree, see that there's nothing for a particular uh, index, allocate a new data structure, and then try and insert it into the tree. Well, if somebody else is running through that same bit of code, then maybe somebody else beat you to it and inserted something first. And then what you would want to do is free yours and return theirs. This gives you the lookup. So you, in the Radix tree code, it was quite common to see, and now I'm going to go off and look it up. Um, you don't need to do that. You, 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 you get back um, the, the value that you're after. <coughs> Um, XA find that um, starting at index, look forward in the tree up, up to max to find the next one. Um, there's also an XA find after, so I didn't bother to document, which will look at uh, uh, index plus one will be the, the lowest value that it will return. And then there's XA reserve, which will um, reserve a spot for you in the tree. Uh, but not, but it, it, it puts in a, a value which will, which will look to be null by anybody else, um, but you get to, so you get to use it. This is basically saying, I can allocate memory now, but I'm about to take some complicated series of spin locks such that I won't be able to sleep to allocate um, space to put this in the array later. Um, I think we've got like three users of this. I've, 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 been through, I've been through the kernel. We've got, yeah, we don't have very many users of XA Reserve. It's not something that most people have to care about. Is that only expanding the range of allocation to cover index and not actually reserving that index? Uh, the question was whether it expands the array um, up as far as index. It, it ensures there is space in the array for that index, such that a, 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 a subsequent store will not need to allocate memory. I'm sorry? Will insert work on such an entry? Yes, insert will work on such an entry. Unless it, somebody else has inserted before you. Correct, now, yes. Ah, I see. I didn't understand it's your question. Reserving, per yes. It's just free um, yeah. Well, it's not reserving it exclusively for your use. Um, because that would require it having some way to de determine what the difference was between you calling XA insert and that person over there calling XA insert. Well, my first thought was, is this why you can't mark a null entry? But, but that's okay. uh, the reason you can't mark a null entry is that there isn't why necessarily is somewhere to store the mark. Hang, 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 hang on a sec. I'm sorry? Uh, the race with the race, you'll you need a lock. A concurrent array. A concurrent array, you, you, you need a lock. Uh, well, okay. Uh, that, that, that depends on, on your eraser side. Um, a lot of places uh, don't call erase, um, uh, will, 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 will know that there is something there before they call erase. But you know, it's, 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 it's up to your code to figure out this kind of thing for itself. I don't think it's on the x-ray to, to do that for you. I saw a question here. Yeah, um, how, how about the, uh, when there's a race condition between, let's say, reserve when there's a waste condition between XA reserve and delete to delete entry and the allocate whatever you have reserved, then uh, after that, you may not have uh, the next time you want to insert something, you may still need to call. Yeah, I, th I think it's the same point that Boaz was making, that, that, that if, if somebody else erases it after you've called um, reserve and before you call store, then you might not have memory um, available to you. 
uh, you, you, you should not use the radix tree in that way. You should not use the X-ray in that way, yeah. I mean, you should make sure, you should make sure you're not going to do that. Okay. Like I said, most, most places don't need to do that kind of thing. It, it, it just needs to be possible. It doesn't need to be part of the, uh, the regular API. Speaking of which, actually, are there any more questions before I, yeah? What if you erase something in the same chunk? What if you erase something in the same chunk? That is fine. It does not matter. It, it does not unreserve it. Uh, what, what we actually do is, is store a internal value there, which means keep this occupied, keep this slot occupied. Now, if somebody calls XA arrays, they will get rid of that, but yeah, it, it, it shouldn't be affected by any operations around it. Um, I should point out this um, internal value will never be returned by um, XA for each. So if you iterate across it, you, you, it will appear to be null to you. But if you use the advanced API, you actually do get to see all of the internal entries and a whole bunch of other gunk that you should know about because you've, you've decided to use the advanced API. I'm not going to talk about the advanced API in this talk. Um, I have written kernel doc for, the, for all of the functions in it. I have written an RST file. Um, Thank you. Please read it. <laughs> ben. Um, can I, as a user, use all bits of the voice in there, or do you have some special value that uh, so you, you're saying, can you store any value in the X-Array? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> what you can store in the X-Array today and what you can store in it tomorrow are going to be slightly different. But um, what the documentation says at the moment is you can store any pointer returned from kmalloc or get free pages or any of that kind of thing. Uh, you can store... Um, you cannot necessarily... Okay, you, 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 you have to avoid pointers which are, o which are only two byte aligned and not four byte aligned, uh, which has upset the Motorola 68,000 people somewhat um, because they want <laughs> uh, M68K. It's the gift that keeps on giving. They, 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 have some, they, have, they have some kernel pointers which are only two byte aligned. Yeah, so for, 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 and, and you can't necessarily put a pointer into a data structure. It, like you can put the base address from a KML, you can't necessarily put, uh, yes. This, 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 is, this is something that I think I'm probably going to end up fixing, but we'll see, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens. Over the yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, so what, what, one of the other things that you can store in this is, um, what, what I call, I haven't put any of this in the slides, is uh, what I call XA values. And this is uh, particularly useful in the page cache. We use it for storing um, shadow entries and DAX entries and uh, swap entries, all, all kinds of things, um, because the page cache overloads everything. Um, but there is one user, it's the, uh, the RAID 5 code. The RAID 5 code actually wants to store integers they were storing integers in the uh, radix tree. And uh, so you, you can, you, there, there, there's, there's a facility for this, you can store any uh, integer between zero and long max. You can't, go, you can't do a negative integer, so anything below, between long max and u long max, but zero to long max was uh, enough for their purposes, um, and it's enough for most people's purposes too. Okay. So yeah, th this is the advanced yeah, API. Do the it does. The sh it takes. I've given you helper functions. Takes care of doing the shifts for you. The radix tree for the, for those who, who who haven't used the radix tree. The radix tree made you do all kinds of encoding yourself. Uh, that was poor API design. I fixed it. Um, the types look right for how everything. It, it, it works the right way. So. One, 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 one of the things with the radix tree was that it was really, really hard to introduce new functionality. Um, and I'm all about introducing new functionality because I was very concerned with um, you know, being able to do you know, two megabyte pages in the page cache. And this is how I got started on the whole thing. So what I ended up doing was um, writing the, the, these, these lower level functions, which all start XAS, and they take an XA state as their first parameter. 
and uh, you, you can tie them together pretty effectively uh, to create an arbitrarily <laughs> complicated function. This, this, this is compare and exchange, which is, you know, is a relatively complicated function. Um, but you could imagine, for, for, for your own code, if you're so inclined, you could do any kind of comparisons with, you know, what, what, what is the value of current, and, you know, is it less than this or greater than that, or, or does it have these other bits set? It's up to you. Um, but you don't have to come to me and say, hey, can, can, can you add this function to the API? You can just, you can just embed something that looks like this in your own code. Again, most people are just never going to need this, but the page cache does. The page cache uses the advanced API uh, throughout. There's a couple of small places where it uses the normal API, but because the page cache is doing so much um, fiddling with the internal guts of the XRA, it's just really appropriate to use the XA state throughout the page cache. Okay. Now, one of the things that I added relatively late on is the, the X-ray can actually do allocation. So normally what you say to the X-ray is store this pointer at index number five. And the allocation API says, I have this pointer. Please store it somewhere that is currently null and tell me where you put it. Tell me that you put it at index number five. And so that's what these two do. Uh, if, if you're familiar with the IDR API, that's where the cyclic comes from. Um, it, it will um, give you a, 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 a value, an index into the array between min and max. Um, the, uh, in, in, in my Git tree, uh, you'll see that uh, the PID allocator actually uses this already, which is kind of cool. Um, when you are using the X-ray for um, for allocation purposes, you actually initialize it slightly different. You, 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 you give it a couple of, you give it an extra flag that says, I'm going to use this for allocation. And it, it uses one of the, um, the, the, the mark bits uh, to track which entries are free. And it also changes how storing a null pointer works. If you, if you store a null pointer to an allocating X-ray, it doesn't actually free it up. It, it distinguishes between a slot which is reserved. So, so, so if you call XA alloc with a null pointer, that does allocate it. Um, and it won't be allocated to anybody else, but if anyone iterates over it, they'll see it as a null pointer. What reserve? Sorry? What about XA reserve? Yeah, you can also call XA. If you, if you want to reserve a particular okay. index, you can call XA reserve. Yeah, it actually uses the exact same mechanism. Um, so, yeah, so it, it, uh, out, uh, until a couple of weeks ago, um, calling XA, XA store with a null pointer did free it up. Um, and then I was going through converting the IDR users, and I found that C groups actually wants to, um, it wants a two-stage freeing process. So it wants, it wants the uh, array, the, it wants the, the, the array entry to appear as null but not to be allocatable. And I didn't have a way in the <laughs> API at the time to transition an entry back from being allocated to being unallocatable but null. And so I changed the semantics of XA store, uh, which I, 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 I regret, but every other solution I came up with was worse, in my opinion. Uh, so, um, I've got a Git tree here, which has conversions of every single Radix tree user over to use the X-Ray. It contains some of the IDR conversions. Um, there's something like 150 users of the IDR in the kernel. I've tackled the hard ones. Oh, I'm, I'm starting out tackling the hard ones, um, because that's how you know whether your API works, is does it does it work for all of the hard users? Because there's, there's a whole bunch of drivers which just use it, and it's really, really easy. And then there's places like C groups, which are trying to do something really quite hard. And you know, you 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 need you need you need to support those people. You need to you have API that works for those people. 
Um, so once we finish converting the IDR, we actually get to get rid of a whole bunch of um, nasty stuff, nasty code from the kernel. And I'm, so that's, that's why I'm really looking at it, not because I have a fundamental hatred of um, IDR, the IDR API, uh, just, just, just one bit of it. Um, another important thing you can use this for is to replace custom implementations of resizing arrays. I've got a great example of this in a minute. And one of the surprising things I hadn't been thinking about um, until fairly recently was the realization it's actually going to be more cache efficient to use an X array than a linked list, which will be a monumental amount of changes that I'm not volunteering to do in the slightest. But maybe you should. Um, don't use it for any of these things right now. Um, <laughs> the bottom one's funny, the FD table. Okay, so first glance, it looks obvious, right? The, the, it, when, 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 when you are um, trying to map file descriptors into a struct file pointer, well, that is a small integer being mapped into a pointer, okay? Well, this is exactly what the X-ray does. And then, so I was, I was all set to do this, and then Google said to me, um, we have this process that has uh, 200,000 file descriptors open, and the cache misses that you are going to introduce by using a tree to store these pointers is going to drop performance by mm, percent. We really need to use a vmalloc array the way that we currently are please keep your hands off the FD table. I don't have a solution yet. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm just gonna leave that one alone and I'm not going to touch that one. But. Why, or why, you know, why not sparse arrays? Okay, why, ooh, ooh, why, why, why not sparse arrays? Um, the current data structure underlying the X array is the radix tree. I haven't changed how it works yet. Um, the radix tree is not is 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 not very efficient if you um, if, if, if 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 the indices you're using are widely spread out and there's big gaps, the data structure blows up. It looks absolutely hor horrid. I mean, I, <laughs> I've, I've I've done some experiments and it's like, oh wow, we are wasting a lot of memory here, um, and it takes a very long time to access any entry in it. Um, I have a plan. A uh, colleague, um, Liam Howlett, and I are working on an RCU safe B tree. Um, it is not ready for presentation yet. We've, we've whiteboarded it. We've started working on code. It's not ready for, to be talked about in any detail yet. Um, there's, there's fundamental decisions that we, we are ready to remake at a moment's notice once we've got some idea of how it's going to work. Um, so we fully intend to support the use, sort of, u sort of um, uses that sparse arrays, hash tables, ranges, RB trees um, all encounter today. But we're not ready yet. Um, so don't do it yet. But you know, next year, I might be standing here saying, hey, these four data structures, you can just stop using them and, and convert over to use the X-ray. We'll see. Um, so this is the AIO code, and uh, I want to thank Dan Carpenter for mentioning this earlier in the conference. Um, he has his smatch code um, flagged this as um, a Spectre allocation. So for those who aren't familiar with Spectre, on the first line uh, we 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 get the um, the ID from user space. And then we, uh, we, we, we check ID greater than or equal to table number. OK, so we, 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 we're, we're checking that we're not going to overrun the bounds of it. But with CPUs being speculatively executing, it will, it will because, because there's, no, there's no guard on it, the CPU will speculatively um, fetch, do, do, will, will, will speculatively do that uh, table arrow, table ID. So it will speculatively fetch from somewhere in memory anywhere in memory that's up to four billion bytes beyond, no, not even four billion, right, because these, these are pointers, so that's going to be 32 billion bytes 
uh, beyond wherever table happens to be pointing. And that's how you get, and then the cache timing attacks, blah, blah, blah. You can read up on how Spectre works if you, if, if you don't already know. Um, so this, uh, Spars was right. It, it, this is a, uh, a Spectre problem. It's only a Spectre problem for tasks which are using AIO, but you know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're trying to uh, exploit the kernel with Spectre, that's not, so easy, that's not a hard thing to find. Um, the the X-ray is invulnerable to Spectre because at each level that it indexes into the array, it masks off the bits that it needs. So there is no point at which the CPU will speculatively load from uh, a, 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 an address which is outside of the allocated space. Do I have this right, Dave? You're looking, you're looking a little Spectre skeptical. I'm not going to dispute what you say about your code. Okay, great. Seems correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the, this this is a, a, an example of code which, in my opinion, very much should be converted to using the X-ray. I haven't uh, sent the patch out for view. In fact, I, I, I wrote it this morning to because um, Dan Carpenter reminded me that this was something that need, did need to do. Um, the complete diff for this is on the order of I think. 126 lines deleted, 60 lines added. Um, so you know it, it's a significant simplification of uh, the, the the code base um, to get rid of all of this code which attempts to um, implement its own resizing array of pointers. Use the one that I've provided for you, unless you're Google and you have 200,000 files in a single process. Um, so this is probably why you came, and I've got. Actually, what, what, what time are you due to finish? Do I have till 45 or do I have till 30? I'm going to keep going while Ted looks that up. Okay, so what you can do is... 4.45. 4.45. Oh, great. Loads of time. Great. So if you just need to keep a list of objects and iterate over them, you can just delete the list head from your data structure. You can, you, you can just say, put this pointer into the x-ray, put this pointer into the x-ray, and then you use the xa for each that we saw earlier to just iterate all, over all of the pointers. This assumes you don't care about order. This assumes you, you, know, you, you, you don't need to um, delete them from the middle. Um, if you need to delete from the middle, then you need to store which I, okay, two, 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 two possibilities. Either you need to store the object ID in your object, or you just take the performance hit of iterate over all of them until you get to the one which matches your pointer. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, for, you know, for small n, an on squared algorithm isn't bad. Um, if, 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 you, if you're fairly sure you're never going to have more than 10 USB devices, taking order of 100 to d delete your USB device, oh, that's, that's, that's not a big deal. Um, until somebody plugs in 1,000 USB devices and, and, and then you were wrong. <laughs> Maybe you should take the four byte um, memory hit. Um, Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. You uh, could, you could, uh, I mean, you're already saving me uh, two pointers in the list head. I can store them in the list head. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's right, you, right. You're, you're, you are saving 12 bytes. Yeah. Exactly. All right, but some, t some objects can be on one of several lists. Um, I, I, I just saw a patch float by which has, okay, we've got a list of pages which are entirely full, and we've got a list of pages which are not entirely full. And so at some point we will move the page from one list to another list. Okay, so in that case, the object needs to remember which list it's part of. And you can either do that with you know, storing your own May, may, maybe you have a small array of lists, or maybe you need, actually need to store a pointer to the list that it happens to be on. That's up to you. You're choosing to use the X-ray. You do what makes sense for you. But in the worst case, where you have to store a pointer, well, you're still up by four bytes. You've still got a four byte win. Um, the other possibility is that maybe you can avoid having multiple lists. 
uh, for, for the particular case that I just mentioned, you could use one of the mark bits in order to say, this page is full, this page is not full. And then you can iterate over the pages which are not full when you're looking to allocate from one of the pages. Yes, sir? Actually, that was actually going to be one of my questions, which is, are the mark bits a bit field, or could I use them to select one of eight? I wasn't sure how the filter worked in the XA for each. Okay, great. Thank, thank you for asking that, Ted. I was, going to, I, I, was, I was going to try and remember to bring that up, but I hadn't actually put it on the slides. So the, quest, the question was, um, the, these three bits, can I, can I treat them as a number between 0 and 7, or should I treat them as independent bits? We have one piece of code in the kernel which treats them as um, a number between 0 and 7. I have rewritten that code because this does not lead to good performance outcomes. So the, the, the way that this is implemented is that you want to, you want, you, okay, the page cache treats them as separate bits, therefore the data structure is optimized for the page cache. Um, you can search for individual bits. You can't search for or of bits. You can't search for and of bits. You have to say, I want to look for bit zero, I want to look for bit one, I want to look for bit two. And the way it's implemented is that when you set a bit on a particular entry, this is implemented as a tree, so it sets a bit on that entry, and then it goes up to the parent, and it sets a bit on that entry, and it goes up to the parent, and sets a bit on that entry. So when you implement, the, <laughs> when you say, I'm going to treat this as a number between 0 and 7, and the, the, the number is incremented from 4, well, from 3 to 4, you clear, you clear bit 0, it iterates all over the tree. It, you clear bit 1, it iterates all over the tree. Then you set bit 2, it iterates all over the tree. This does not lead to good performance outcomes. So I changed the, uh, the, the offending piece of code to instead of um, counting how many times this uh, thing, had, something had happened, to actually just chain off consecutive entries. It's all debug code, nobody really cares about it. Um, but I, I saw it and I, I, I was kind of horrified. <laughs> well, the problem is that once code is in the kernel, somebody else might copy it and put it in a performance path, and uh, then we're all, we're all stuffed up. Um, so if yeah. I actually have an issue for you know, being on one of, say, I think it's either five or six, um, I assume the reason why it's only three mark bits is because you're using the little bits of uh, pointer star it, so trying, asking for more than three mark bits is unlikely to be something that you can do without like costing a whole lot, I assume. Um, you, 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 you are correct that asking for more than uh, three bits will cost a lot. It's, the implementation isn't quite the way that you imagine it to be. Uh, but you are not the only person who has asked for this. Dave Chinner has also asked for having more than three bits. And I have promised him that I will do my best to get him more than three bits. That, 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 that's a good question. So Dave, Dave's asking, would it make more sense to have this as an enum rather than a bit field and just have a, 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 a flag somewhere in the X-ray header that says we're using this as, as a number between 0 and 7 rather than as a bit field? Maybe. That, 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 that's a solution um, which might... The mm. You file system people, you're all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, then the yeah, search is linear. Uh, that, 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 that would be the trick. Searching is linear, keep your, yeah. um, your structure. You know? Yeah. Because the, 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 the optimization here is that the, the search is true. Yeah, the, uh, both, both is making the point that the, the, the search is, is, is going to be efficient, and if you're trying to use it as an enum, the well, search won't be efficient. Well, let, yeah, so I'm, this, this is why I'm not making any promises about what could be done. I'm, 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 I'm reserving judgment. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I, have, I have 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so, uh, generally, uh, users like this don't care about the order that uh, pointers are in the list. If you do care about the order, then you can use the cyclic allocator that I showed you uh, on a slide a few slides back. Um, we don't yet have a cyclic iterator. So if, 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 if you wrap round at some point, things are going to become out of order, and if that matters to you, then we can always introduce a cyclic iterator. 
Um, the order of the cycle is four billion entries. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, 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 it's possible you might wrap round and then you'd start seeing things out of order. You know, if this kind of thing's going to matter for, to you, then um, you know, don't convert your linked list yet. Let, let's talk about ways we might try and, and, and make that kind of thing um, happen. But we don't have any users for that yet, so I'm not planning on solutions for those users who, don't necess who, who may not exist. Yeah, four four <laughs> billion takes a very long time to happen. Like if 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 if, if an event happens um, ten times a second, it's going to take one point two years before you even notice it's happened. So, I mean, some things in computers happen more than ten times a second. I'm told, but um, you know, if you're using it for <laughs> USB devices, you're never going to notice. Um, if, if, if you're using it for network packets, then uh, yeah, you're going to notice and it's going to happen really quickly. I do not yet have guidance for when this is a win and when this is not a win. My, my, my suggestion is that you, um, you, you, you suck it and see. You give it a try, see if you like it. Um, it should be much more um, cash efficient because uh, removing something from a linked list involves dirtying three cache lines. It's your, you dirty your own cache line, you dirty your next, and you dirty your prev. Because you've got to update those to point to each other. No, you, no, no, no. You don't, you, well, you, you touch the spin lock at the top, and then you read all the way down to the, your leaf, and then you touch that leaf. So you're dirtying two cache lines, not three. Sounds like a win to me. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <coughs> that, that, that you're, you're quite right. My compare and exchange operator does not actually use compare and exchange. It uses a spin lock, yes. At least for the case where it's replacing an existing entry. Could we? Or um, Maybe. So the, 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 the answer is a definite maybe on that. Um, there are, I want, I, want to, I want to fix up the data structure to be the B tree first, and then we'll start looking at places where we could eliminate the spin lock. I would like to be able to eliminate the spin lock from the top, um, but there may be other things which end up mattering more to performance. Um, one of the places where we desperately need to start using the XRA is for the swapping code, because the swapping code totally doesn't scale right now. And if we make the swapping codes, well, actually, <laughs> the, the swapping code has been made to scale by brute force. We, 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 we currently split up our um, swap devices into one megabyte size pieces so that we have, <laughs> so we scale the number of spin locks into, it's, 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 it's dreadful. It's absolutely dreadful. We should all be ashamed of our swapping code because it's terrible. But of course, nobody wants to fix the swapping code because it's, it's really hard and complicated. And so inevitably, I will end up fixing the swapping code in about two years, given the state <laughs> of my to-do list at this point. Anyway, so I've, I've, I do actually have some, having said I don't have any advice for when you should and shouldn't use, I've, 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 I've tried to summarize uh, some advice here. Don't try and convert any of the LRUs over to the XRA yet. Um, once we've got the new data structure in place, it might work well for the LRU, or it might still fail for the LRU. Um, for, 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 for your standard device drive that's just trying to keep, pack of, keep track of its devices, this is great. It's better than great, because we actually have a fairly frequent anti-pattern in drivers, where they will use the IDA to allocate the number of the device and then they saw the devices in the linked list. <laughs> so despite the fact the IDR has existed for longer than the IDA, rather than just using the IDR, they used the IDA and a linked list. <clears throat> I, 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 I have opinions about device driver writers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not expressing those opinions. <laughs> I, I, I have once been a device driver. In fact, in fact, I myself have done this. Uh, in, in, in the NVM Express driver, I did exactly this. Now, in my defense at the time, 
I didn't do the worst anti-pattern. I did not search the linked list to find devices which had matching IDs. But somebody else then did. <laughs> Be smarter than me. Don't do this. Um, another good reason not to do this is if you can't allocate memory at list add or list move time. Um, because you, you, you may need to allocate memory in, or, in order to store this, this, this pointer. Um, once we have some experience converting linked lists to using the X-ray, maybe we'll decide that there's, there's, there's actually a better API. There's, the, there's an easier API that we could have that would let people use the underlying X-ray data structure and not even know that it's the X-ray, like you know, it's, it's just the array of pointers API or, or something. I, I don't know. Um, something, something with a catchy name. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm bad at names, which is how we ended up with X-ray. But um, you know, I, I, I have no particular attachment to um, we must use the XRA API everywhere. Like, if, the, if, the, if there's a, an API which speaks to device driver writers and, and recommends itself and says, don't use a linked list, use me instead, then let's, let's find that name. Let's make it as easy and as obvious for people to use this as possible. So I thought I'd show you a linked list conversion. And um, I, I, I picked on something James Bottomley once did. And in his defense, he did this before the X-ray exists, long before the X-ray existed, I think even before the IDR existed. But what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get across in this, in, in this slide is it's almost exactly the same amount of code. Um, there's about the same number of plus and minus lines here to use the linked list and to use the X-ray. Um, if you find this hard to read, I, I, I do have a, a, um, a, a, an X term blown up behind this uh, presentation, if you'd rather see that. But um, I, 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 think, I think my point is clear. It's, it's not that complicated. Um, this code, well, the, 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 the patch that this was culled from does actually compile. I haven't tested it or anything. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you can see it. it's. It's pretty straightforward. The, 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 the one thing I regret is that um, there's, there's a GFP atomic there. I, I looked through the call path of where these things get added to, you know, the, the, the list add tail above it is what it replaces. And I looked through the call path, and the call path is allocating this um, SDEV. The SDEV gets allocated to GFP atomic. So I, I don't know what code path leads to us being called in a context where we have to use GFP atomic, but I. I don't care. Uh, that, 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 that's just this example. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, some, some, someone needs to go through all the crafty old drivers. This is the SCSI core, by the way. But and it could be worse. It could be GFP DMA. I mean, it could, it could be TTY. <laughs> <laughs> you know, t I, 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 are you allowed to say TTY given the code of conduct? <laughs> I, 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 I think that's going to induce trauma for some people. <laughs> Anyway, that's, that, 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 that's all I have. Um, I have one minute to spare. Uh, any final questions? Uh, I have a question about the linked list conversion. Uh, with linked list, uh, you, you don't need to call a uh, memory allocator to allocate memory, but with X-Array, you may have to call the memory allocator. Yes. So that can introduce some uh, unexpected consequence, maybe. Yeah, ab absolutely. It, it could induce some unexpected consequences. Uh, so one of, the, one of the things I haven't said is that um, the data structure is such that if you only have a single entry at zero, we actually don't allocate anything at all. And this is the common case. For this particular link list, that is the common case because your typical SCSI target has a single device attached to it. Um, I mean, that's not going to be the case for everyone. but. Um, and yeah, this 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 is a this is a typical linked list with 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 one or zero elements on it. Do I free or do I never free? Um, I, I I I free on demand as as a node uh, gets to zero, uh, as as a node gets to either zero users or one user that is that is on the, the in, in in the left, it will move up. Yes, it's RCU freed. Oh, hush you. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you said that the semantics for subsequent XI storage mm. for XI alloc with null versus XI reserve are different. 
No, the, the, they are the same. So I thought you said one of them you'll iterate and you'll get a null. What, you'll see the entry with a null pointer and the other one you don't see the entry. Uh, n I, if I said that, then I misspoke. Uh, well, the, if, if, if you're using the XA for each iterator, yeah. whether something was reserved with XA reserve or whether it was reserved with XA alloc of null, it's the same thing. The, the same. No, it, doesn't, it doesn't get returned by XA for each. It is not returned. Okay. Uh, XA for each setting something to null is actually the termination condition. So you never see. Um, sdev in, in this particular example, you, you, would, you would never see S, sdev set to null within that loop. I'm happy. Oh, good. <laughs> Heinz. Uh, you mentioned uh, don't use it to replace arbitraries as yet. Why is that and when is it going to be changed? The question is about arbitraries. When, when can we use it to replace an arbitrary? Uh, we, have to do our, we have to finish writing the RCU B tree first and then we will test it. And once, once it achieves good performance for us, we will inflict it on the wider world and you can start replacing RB trees with it. So if, it, if the RB tree happens to have a key space, which is mostly contiguous or in you know, chunks that are contiguous, yeah. it might actually work well. It's really, if it mapped onto a completely sparse key space is where things get disastrous. Is that right? Um, so the question is, uh, are, are there circumstances in which replacing an RB tree with, 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 with this make, actually makes sense? The fundamental problem is that the radix tree data structure is not good for having ranges. And, and the RB tree data structure is good with ranges, as we use it for VMAs, we use it for all kinds of things. Um, so it assumes zero base, essentially. Well, it's, it's, zero base. Not, 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 not so much that it's, that it's assuming a zero base. It is just, it is bad at storing, it is bad at representing the situation in which values A to B all map to the same pointer, which is what you want from an RB tree. Or Actually, what? I'm not using an RB oh. tree that way. Oh, yes. right, you, you're using a single value to a single pointer. Yes. Uh, yeah, it, it might work out great for you then. Right. Um, I, I would just be hesitant to replace uh, anything else, <laughs> particularly the VMA tree. At this point, not, yeah. we're looking at the VMA tree as, as, as our target, and it's just not ready yet. Uh, but we do want to. Don't you worry that an RB tree is going to lose some of your cache of PGT as you have today? Do you mean a, a B tree? Yeah. Uh, do, do I worry that a B tree is going to lose some of the uh, good cache line behavior that we have today? Uh, we think we have a good enough, the, 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 there are always going to be situations in which the radix tree will outperform a B tree. But the radix tree has a lot of glass jaws, which I fear that we're hitting rather more often than, than we actually realize right now. Um, I'll give you an example. If, if, if you are accessing, um, in fact, I'll, I'll use the whiteboard behind me because I can do that. So if you are accessing, um, it, works really, it works really well if you're accessing um, you know, uh, the file from range naught to I don't know, one megabyte. That's great. It all fits in, in, in just one. But then you skip ahead. You, you, you decide to read off at one terabyte of that file. What do we do? Well, we, we, we create. Right, so that, that, that's all of 0, 6, 12, 18. And then we come up, come up to the other side, and we create another one all the way down. And, oh, and, and then the... How many entries in each one? 64. Um, so this, the, the, you know, the, the, this is what it looks like when you access it, you know, 0 and n terabytes, whatever, it's a, whatever n works out to be. Um, please don't nitpick me. Um, <laughs> so this sucks, right? I mean, if, if you, you've gone from being able to just, you know, two, two hops to get to the page you want to being one, two, three, four, and all you've done is access something way, way, way up at the top of the file, and all of a sudden, you, you, you know, you, you, you've, you've really sort of stuck. A, an art, a B tree will instead have 
uh, an intermediate node here and another node down here. We're smart people, Ben. We've got a solution here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the, the, the answer is that we, 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 have, uh, we, we don't just use one format for our nodes. We've got a very dense node format, and we've got a sparse node format, essentially. And we've talked about maybe adding a third sort of intermediate, sparse-ish, dense-ish kind of format. We're going we're gonna to do it with two nodes first, see what happens. We can always, it's, it, it's just code. And now that we've got the X-Array API in, and people aren't poking around at the internals of the Radix tree anymore, we can actually just change the implementation and nobody's going to know until things get faster for them. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> or you could have two back-end implementations and when you instantiate the X-Array, you could pass a flag that says, we want the traditional Radix tree versus... No, it should automatically switch. Oh, no, no. <laughs> People are over-designing already. We haven't even got code to do lookups yet, and it's being over-designed as we speak. Um, uh, se seriously, I, I, I do think we're actually going to end up with two, maybe three different implementations. I, I can see us having separate implementations for 32 and 64-bit, and I can also see us having a separate implementation for like config tiny or something. We'll see, we'll see. Like, that's the, the, the benefit of actually having the abstract interface. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate your time.